right center. Today, I'll cover the current status and issues of married migrant women in Korea. And the participants here, I, uh, there are various countries participants here, so uh, today's issue will be really meaningful. So uh, please let me go to the next slide. Is there a slideshow function? So please share the PowerPoint material and please move on to the next slide. Okay, while preparing, um, I'll introduce my center. We have been engaged in this field for 20 years, and first time ever, this uh, we provide a shelter for violence victim women, and there are 26 shelters in Korea for migrant women, and we provide counseling services. So in the Korean society, uh, we want those migrant women to raise their voices and uh, be confident in the Korean society, so we support them. Since we have limited time today, uh, today, I'll briefly talk about the key ideas today. So first of all, in the Korean society, I'll I introduce how the migrant marriage migrant began and the status quo of it in Korea. And also, I'll cover the reality, what kind of challenges there are. And uh, there are a lot of participants, uh, member nations here, so um, I would like to mention those uh, systematic um, challenges that lead those migrant women to go back to their home countries, and, and then I'll go uh, move up to our suggestions. So in Korea, international marriage is not uh, solely limited to Korea, but also uh, developed nations' males and underdeveloped nations' women's marriage is very common. So developed nations' males, uh, those who uh, are left behind in their domestic marriage market, uh, they uh, seek marriage with uh, women from underdeveloped nations. So in Korea, there are many women from diverse nations. They immigrate to Korea through marriage. And if you take a look at the nation-to-nation -nation data, uh, since Korea is an advanced country, so economically it seems like for those women it looks like upper marriage. However, the males from Korea are at the lower level uh, income bracket in Korea, so in fact it is a decreased downward marriage. In Korea, so I'll cover the background history in Korea. Korea used to be not so active in terms of international interaction, so there was not a lot of marriage. So it was only after the 1990s when statistics Korea began coming up with statistic data. However, after the Korea-China cooperation, then those ethnic uh, Korean-Chinese people uh, temporarily uh, married those people in the uh, farm areas. And there is one peculiar um, culture where the unification church led uh, males and females to marry. And uh, since the 2000s, the culture became, uh, changed, where brokerage market emerged. And due to this brokerage, after the 2000s, Korean males and other Asian women's marriage significantly increased. And in 2007, the nation began to legally regulate this, so they came up with the Marriage Brokerage Management Act in 2007. And nowadays, the brokerage became a very big industry though nowadays it decreased a bit. So if you take a look at the statistics, like I mentioned, Korean male and foreign women's marriage um, exceeded 10,000 since 2002 yearly, and the, it peaked in 2005, which exceeded 30,000. 
and afterwards it slightly decreased and by 2012 it was over 20,000 but kept decreasing and last year in 2020 uh, it significantly decreased and that is mainly because of the COVID-19 circumstances. So in Korea, the entire population of foreign people is up to 2.5 million however, uh, in 2019, but because of the COVID circumstances, now it decreased to um, 204 million. But nowadays, if you take a look at the statistics of marriage, so the upper part shows the gender population increased by year. So those foreign people um, who came here with visa who married Korean people, about 170,000. And if you take a look at down, there are um, nationalized people uh, who got married to Koreans and uh, got the Korean citizenship, uh, which tallied at 140,000. So those foreign people with a visa and those people who already nationalized and became a Korean citizen, uh, they are tallied at 310,000. And males and females combined, and about 85% are women. So they are currently living in Korea. So Korean foreign marriage, back in 2005, uh, it peaked which accounted for 11% of the entire marriage in Korea, but nowadays it's lower than 10%. Now in Korea, there are human rights issues emerging, and one important thing is the mar international marriage through brokerage. Uh, marriage through brokerage happens significantly in a specific country, especially in Vietnam and Cambodia. Those two countries take a lot of portion. And because of time, I skipped some slides very quick, but if we go back, there are countries where we received a lot of nationalities, and China accounts the highest portion, and then Vietnam, Japan, Philippines, and Cambodia, and they take type top five. And among them, Vietnam is ranked at top two, and Vietnam shows a significantly high level when it comes to brokerage marriage. And one of the specific characteristics is that the marriage between Korean male and foreign women's age gap is really high. If you take a look at here, the average Korean are 43.6 at the age, in the mid-40s, and women 25.2, so they're around 25 years old. So their age difference is almost 20 years. This is commonly found when it comes to brokerage marriage, So and a lot of human rights issues occur here. And when it comes to brokerage marriage, here the east part is CZ and Up Myeonbu is the administrative um, district parts in Korea, so rural areas. So it's highly likely that those women will live in rural areas. So brokerage marriage, they in order to increase demand from Korean males, they advertise and promote this advertisement, which was a controversy in Korea. Back in 2006, the National Human Rights Council involved in this, and last year we kept monitoring those advertisements. So regarding this, Ministry of Women Rights and Gender Equality announced that they would severely punish this if they violate these regulations. So if they list the uh, face uh, photo and height or weight is the issue. So in the history, so it was like an exhibition of females so that Korean males could choose those women. So that was prevalent in the Korean history. But nowadays, the ministry actively regulated this. So because there are a lot of issues, so of course there are a lot of divorces. So in the later stage, I will also cover this, but the divorce rate is not that high. 
So among the entire marriage, the international marriage account for approximately 7% of the entire marriage, but um, the percentage that international divorce takes is only about 5%, which is not significantly high. But when those foreign women get divorced in Korea, then that means they lose their right to stay in Korea. That is the problem. And like I mentioned in the early part of my presentation, if you take a look at the national level, it seems like they are moving to a richer country. However, they get married to a poor, um, economically uh, poor males. So um, when we took this survey of multicultural families uh, back in 2018, the uh, monthly income was about uh, uh, $4,100 if you uh, translate that into U.S. dollars. And uh, lower than was accounted for almost 60%. So those males get lower monthly income compared to other Korean males. So there are a lot of supportive measures in Korea for women, uh, which is shelters. Those shelters uh, protect those violent victims, and the 28 uh, centers protect those victims of domestic violence. And in order to protect them from sexual violence, there is also uh, one shelter for that. And how many women get protected here? About 1,000 women visit here, and 600 were victims by themselves, and 40% are their accompanied children. And there are diverse um, incomes, uh, influx sources, and when you take a look at the cumulative number, the China accounts for the highest number portion. However, Vietnam accounts for the highest victim portion. And this is 24-hour uh, 24-hour language support system where those uh, victim women can get a counseling system through a phone call. And in 2020, uh, we provided 170,000 counseling calls services. So it covered um, domestic argument, or violence, and medical and legal issues were covered. So those are main topics. And like I mentioned before, the accumulated number here, Vietnamese women take a significant portion compared to other uh, women from other countries. And this uh, is a summary of what had been reported on the news media outlets. And since 2017, we there were, there were some homicide cases, domicile homicide cases, and about 23 cases were found based on our research, and they lose their lives in Korea under very bad circumstances. Of course, not all women suffer this. Although they got married to Koreans, but it doesn't mean that they have a secure right to stay in Korea. The visa type is F6. And if they live together, a domicile with Koreans, and if they form a ordinary family, then they do get, uh, do receive a lot of supports. However, if they divorce or if their uh, partners die, then they are put into difficult circumstances. And the Korean government uh, take care of those respective types and based on the type, the way how to nationalize change. So if the Korean partner survives and if the uh, family environment is doesn't have a problem, then there shouldn't be a problem. However, if the family environment becomes worsens, then that means their lives in Korea uh, faces a lot of challenges. However, uh, the fact is there are a lot of brokerage marriage, so uh, from the very beginning, they face a lot of challenges and issues. So when they marry each other, then it would be the best if they could live happily ever after. However, if there are problems, then they, of course, they consider divorce. And if they get divorced, and if they decided to divorce, then that means they, foreign people, came to Korea because of marriage, but if they get divorced, then that means they have to go back to their home countries, according to the Korean law. 
So uh, they have to prove uh, to the Korean legal system that uh, it wasn't their fault. Then they have to go back to their nations. However, uh, there is exceptional uh, way where if they raise their children in Korea, so if they can prove that they are child caring in Korea, then they can. So I mentioned that the visa type is F6, and among marriage visas, yearly, in 2020, the F6 visa, over 1,300 people were illegally residing in Korea. So, people, many people think that marriage visa is stable. However, uh, they, many of them are put into instable circumstances. Recently, uh, since 2000s, international marriage significantly increased, and nowadays uh, it is rather put in a stable condition. International marriages keep decreasing in Korea, but thankfully, um, in terms of international brokerage marriage, there had been have been a lot of efforts. And also, meanwhile, Korean males' demand in international marriage also decreased because of a lot of different various uh, reasons. And uh, since this uh, data is rather long, and they, now they have uh, their willingness uh, demand for jobs and child caring, and their demand for Korean language education has decreased. And in Korea, systematically, if they are not uh, well um, settled in Korea, then they face issues like divorce. So uh, residing challenges still remain. So sometimes they have no choice, but they are forced to go back to their home countries. So those nationalized women uh, that topic will be covered during the discussion session, but by our definition, they came to Korea because of marrying Korean males, but because of their uh, voluntary or involuntary issues, they have to go back to their home countries. And uh, Ministry of Justice, they do not have their own statistics regarding this, but uh, when those women come to Korea, then usually those foreign women's families think that the, the women would settle permanently in Korea. So the foreign society, the communities, or the women themselves are not prepared to go back to their home countries. So we uh, conducted some survey here, and we conducted some interviews of those nationalized women, and we published a book, uh, which is The Story That Has Not Been End, is the title. So those Mekong nations, in terms of cooperative measures, I would like to mention a couple of ideas. So as a field specialist, um, this is one of my key concerns. In Korea, the human rights issues of migrant women and the brokerage system, uh, we have been key raising voices against these issues, and the Korean government says regarding the Korean marriage visas, they uh, enhance, increase the regulations. That means the gatekeeping level increases. Then should, will those women be stably stay in Korea? That's not the case. So how can they stay in Korea safely and how sa uh, can they safely move to Korea? That is an issue that we should cover. And later on, uh, we will also listen to presentation about Vietnam's case and uh, currently how we can make use of our um, systems effectively is a thing to talk about. And the migrant women in Korea, there are keep ongoing issues and how we are going to properly support them and how can we take collaborative measures to support them is another thing to talk about. Well, thank you for your attention. Thank you.